I got a new one for you. A young man by the name of Joshua Brian Bohannon went missing on June 3rd, 2021. He was last seen with his wife, Jessica Marie Cooper Bohannon, who has since moved on and Joshua has not even been found yet. Stick around, this is a little bit weird, this story. And I think it's solvable because somebody must know something. Welcome to Left Undone, Incomplete Investigations. I'm Catherine. Hi, and welcome back. Thank you. Please listen to this story. You may be able to help. Joshua Brian Bohannon went missing on June 3rd, 2021. He was last seen with his wife. They were also driving a GMC Yukon early model, pewter colored. Their last known whereabouts were in the Bugis Falls area in Putnam County, Tennessee. His mother has posted quite a bit. There's a Facebook group that's following this case. And it appears that Joshua actually has two small children, very small children. The family made this statement. The family of Joshua Bohannon needs the help of the public, friends of Joshua and Jessica Marie Cooper Bohannon, friends of their friends, and any and everyone that knows who has heard something about Joshua's disappearance. To come forward with the information you know or what you heard happened to Joshua, and especially where Joshua can be located. Please, 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 we are begging. Joshua did not just walk off the face of the earth. Someone knows something and we will not stop looking until Joshua is found. If you have information, you can block your number to stay anonymous if you want. Please, we want Joshua found. The phone number for the Putnam County Sheriff's Department is 931-528-8484. The story gets a little weird. Joshua is a type one insulin dependent diabetic. You know, as most of us know, an insulin dependent diabetic cannot live without their medication. He does not have an insulin pump, according to what I'm reading online. And so he's been gone quite a while. It's hard to imagine that Joshua is even alive, but we don't want to lose hope. Really interesting, the information that I'm finding in the groups about this case. There's one screenshot from Jessica's sister who refers to Joshua in the past tense. It says, Jessica, her name is Danielle. Jessica loved him and this is wrong of his family to do this to her. I will never forget them for this and neither will she. Loved him, past tense. The picture of the vehicle they say is her sister's car, the GMC Yukon. And the picture that I'm showing you here on the screen was uh, like a security camera picture of Jessica wearing Joshua's Nike slip-on sandals and um, at the driver's side of this car in the apartment complex at her sister Danielle's in Crossville, Tennessee. Here's a picture of the Yukon. It says here, does the vehicle look familiar? It is the vehicle that Jessica Marie Cooper Bohannon was driving the day Joshua went missing. It has Grossville tags. That is Jessica standing by the driver's side door. This picture was taken on the same day that Joshua went missing, June 3rd, 2021. Jessica has Joshua's black Nike slides on her feet. If you saw this vehicle on June 3rd, please contact. Yesterday, August 24th, a man by the name of Nathan Hancock updated his profile picture on Facebook, and he is actually holding Jessica. I'll put that picture up on the screen. Apparently, Jessica's already in a new relationship. The comments on Nathan's Facebook are really interesting. People are actually saying things like, how do you get with someone who has a whole husband missing and has been for two months, but has no answers when she was the last person seen with him? Do you seriously think she cares for you? I mean, seriously, dude, think about it. How would you feel if you were Josh's family 
and the last person saw with him has already moved on, acting as if he didn't matter. So the story has changed quite a bit. The first story was he was left between Burgess Falls and Puckett's General Store that day by his wife. It, then it was said that they share a phone and she had the phone. Then the story changed and the new story is sh they were together. Another story by a family member said that Jessica had told them that Jessica told them that she dropped Joshua off at a gas station and then never saw him again. Then I'm going to go over this Facebook message back and forth or text message that someone had published. It says, it, this is a conversation with Jessica and another person. She said, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. None of it does. That was Jessica. The friend says, was you all camping or something? I don't know the full story. And it's like they haven't put any details out there. I just don't get why they are not searching that area. And Jessica says, they have been searching it. We left Crossville, went to a buddy's house. Both effed up really, really bad on Xanax. And we left our buddy's house at like 4 a.m. and went to sleep at a parking ride because I couldn't drive back to Crossville where we had been staying at my sister's house. And... We also woke up from the parking ride. They have us on camera leaving together at a gas station in Cookville. We went in and got gas and food and left, and we wanted to drive down to the park. Well, we stopped at this house we thought it might be for rent, but that's not why we were there. We were being dumb and stupid, broke inside, and was acting crazy. Well, the park ranger came in, and I ran out the back door and around the house to him, and Joshua was wanted. So I told the park ranger, I'm sorry. He said, this is private property, you cannot be here. And I said, I'm sorry, we'll leave. And he said, who's we? Cause Joshua was still in the house when I went around to talk to the park ranger. And I told the park ranger a different name because my husband is wanted from police and I didn't want him to go to jail. So I acted like I was getting in my car to leave and I started hollering, but no answer, no nothing. So I got in the car and went across the bridge and knocked on this woman's door. And I told her I was about out of gas. How did I get to the next gas station? And she told me, and I went to NJ Market, got gas and went straight back. I went back to the house. I drove up and down every side road there possibly was, but nothing. It doesn't make sense to me. I did a polygraph test for the TBI and no answers, but I got into a fight with Joshua's family around four. When I got him, she called the law. I went over the fence and slept outside all night, got up, drove to Burger King. And when I came out of Burger King, Brandon Bean was waiting for me to take me to jail the very next day that Joshua went missing. I had to do 20 days for missing my F Court, a fiend court date. It's all, it's just all been bullshit. No help from nobody, but family, you know, sorry about all the typos. Uh, yeah, it's very hard to read the typos. Sorry, it's a long girl. Just being honest, this sucks really bad. You know, we were inseparable together 24 seven. And she goes on and says, we were, we were either in the basement of the house or the living room. They took me back while I was in jail to see if you could remember any of it but all I remember is Joshua telling me that he thought someone was here I ran out the back door and I went around the house and I never seen him again but he was trying to pick something really big up I don't remember if it was a door or a table one of the two I really can't remember anything those Xanaxes were laced with fentanyl she has it completely spelled wrong and I almost died I slept for four days straight when I went to jail in Sparta and they had to keep coming in and checking my pulse and stuff but I slept the night before I went to jail good hours of sleep too and when I got to jail I hadn't taken anything and I remember writing and I remember writing to the police station but I don't remember getting my fingerprints or nothing it doesn't make any sense because I feel like he had ran he would have been found surely by now and there has been all kinds of crazy rumors floating around out there. 
it blows my mind how the detectives on this case has acted and treated the family. We love Joshua and they think we are overreacting because they think he's a fugitive on the run. But he doesn't go a day without calling his brother, me, or his mama. You know, something bad has happened to him. I know he didn't have the insulin or anything either. And then she goes on, she says, thank you so much. He was a very bad diabetic, type one, juvenile. He had his moments for sure, you know, like his whole attitude could just change at the drop of a hat. But I do feel like he would have been walking down the main road for sure, because he was wanted. But the detectives think that someone at Puckett's campground has something to do with his disappearance and stuff. So there's an ongoing investigation going on down there right now. Hopefully, if they do their job, that is, yeah, all the time shorthanded. There's nothing there would have been a smell by now, for sure. As many people is down there all the time. I've never actually been there. I didn't even know how to get there. Joshua showed me how to get there. I feel like he, whether went to Puckett's and got food like they originally said he did and then when the police got there they recanted the story about everything see ever seen him at all it's all bs you know something is going on down there they even shut the store down the same day we went back down there said he was low staffed with the cooks and we didn't order food nobody was hardly there during the day but he also said his cameras wasn't working at the time and i think that was a lie because they have events down there all the time I feel like he either overdosed and fell out somewhere or someone at Puckett's knows more than what they say. And eventually it's going to come out, you know? And then the person replies, girl, do you think he could have made it to the water and got swept away or something? Yes, it's possible because when I tell you we were effed up, we were like animals. They have us on camera together in the gas station and I look like I had straight down syndrome. And Joshua was running, literally running in the gas station, trying to get in front of all the people, trying to get all the food that he could get. And I don't even remember that part. But then this person says, I hate this so much that it's very odd for them to recant their story. I hope you get some closure soon and they can bring him home to you. I just want to help in any way possible. She says, Jessica says, I appreciate you so much. Thank you again, really. Meant that from the bottom of my heart girl. I'll let you know if I hear anything else or any updates. And then the person says, okay, girl, let me know if you need anything at all. Even if it's to vent or talk, I'm here, sis. I can't imagine how. That was the end of that. Um, there are some posts that people are saying that Jessica's living with her new boyfriend and her sister Danielle actually says, who told you that? Because she's not living with her boyfriend. She's living with me, her sister. She's not living with another man. She's living with me, her sister. Now you all need to stop believing everything you hear. So as confusing as this is, if anybody has any more information or is following this story, please leave comments below to help me get up to speed with this. As far as I can tell right now, Joshua missing, Jessica's story is all wackadoodled. They were on drugs. So memory is messed up. Then Jessica went to jail while Joshua's been missing. Then she came out. Rumor has it that she's not helping search. And then she found a new guy. And Joshua's an insulin dependent diabetic. And his family is very upset. His mother's Facebook, um, her name is Alicia Bohanan. And she is constantly, you know, posting pictures and information. And it sounds like uh, there's just a lot, a lot, a lot of pointing fingers and people believing that Jessica knows something and a lot of unanswered questions. But I'll tell you, the biggest red flag to me is Jessica getting a new man already. Was this man already in her life? When you look at his Facebook, he... It says he lives in Livingston, Tennessee, and he moved to Livingston, Tennessee in 2021. Now, when I look at Jessica's Facebook, she is a certified nursing assistant, home health aide at a rehab center. Her hometown is Alpine, Tennessee, 
and she's married to Joshua B. Bohannon since March 25th, 2018. She does not have her Facebook updated with the new boyfriend or any mention of him, but he certainly did not have a problem posting a picture of them, which causes all kinds of new speculation and rumors. Clearly, that should have been kept on the down low. So we can blame the new beau for putting it out there. So apparently Jessica stopped taking the family calls and there is a post from a Raymond Allen that says, I know between everybody on Facebook and everybody that has shared this message that somebody knows something about Joshua's whereabouts. And this was on June 17th. Okay, so this is old, but this is right after he went missing a couple weeks. I want to say thank you for everybody doing what you have done for sharing this post and for the help in looking. But somebody out there knows something. Help give our family some closure. Do know if he's dead or alive, but do the right thing and step up and help us find him. It's only right, man. And if you have a heart, please do the right thing and think about it this way. No, anybody that knows Josh knows he would do the same thing for you if you were missing. Hey, everybody, I don't ever get on here asking for anything, but I'm looking for my nephew and I know somebody know something. If you know where he is, dead or alive, tell somebody. It's not being a snitch. You can contact me. No names will ever be mentioned. He has two children and a family that is going crazy right now. If he's alive, we just want to hear his voice and know he's okay. Take a picture with a time stamp, anything. Somebody on here being Facebook knows something. If you heard anybody talking, or anything that could lead to finding him, please reach out and let us know the smallest bit of information that maybe nothing to you could be what leads us to him. If anybody out there knows where he is, have a heart and please let us know that he's okay or just do the right thing and tell somebody, call the police. If you don't want to deal with the police, call me, but please reach out to someone. So there's a lot of finger pointing at Jessica. If she was the last person with him, how does she not know where he's at? Did the drugs fog her memory that bad? She doesn't remember what happened to him. Is she guilty of something now that she has a new man? Was this man in the picture before? Is she just completely lost like we are and confused? On June 9th, the sheriff's department had searched on foot, air, and brought dogs to the last known location, which is Burgess Falls area, and they did not find any clues about Josh. There's a, someone had put a, Vicki Cheryl Jones had put a reward for $5,000. I will personally give to the information leading us to finding him. Missing, last seen Thursday, 6-3-2021. Last seen at Puckett's General Store in Burgess Falls area. Anyone leading to, find, leading to finding Josh, she is insulin dependent and has no medicine. Please, please call 931-528-8484. And it looks like Jessica made a new Facebook since that time. And Nathan is one of her friends. Her new boyfriend is one of her friends on this Facebook page. Another family member on July 29th said, Josh is missing. How do we go on with Joshua Bohannon missing? And it's just like, and it's like he just disappeared and no sign of finding him and the cops have no leads. And my family is just broken down and we have so many questions and no answers. I just don't know what to do. We have searched and prayed and reached out to everyone we know to help us. Please, everyone, keep us in your prayers. We will never stop looking and searching for Joshua Bahanan. And Jessica Marie Bahanan has not been able to find him either. And the cops thought because Jessica was in jail that he was hiding. Well, that's not the case because she passed her polygraph about where she left him. And now Jessica has been out for three weeks and we still have no Josh and no answers. Please know this is killing our family, not knowing where he is or if he is dead or alive. Joshua has not used his insurance to get his medicine, so it's not looking like we will find him alive. But if anyone knows anything about where Jessica and Josh were before June 3rd or on the day of June 3rd, please reach out to us or the Sheriff's Department. We need closure, and this is killing his mother and brother and wife and family. Please pray we find him alive. Missing identify unclaimed people. Is there a way to see how long someone has been somebody's Facebook friend? Because Nathan is on both of her Facebooks, her new one and her old one. You know, if Jessica is passing her polygraph and is completely innocent of anything, if she was already in cahoots having a relationship with this guy, Nathan, maybe Nathan needs to be looked at. I'm speculating, but we have to think about every single clue 
an avenue. And I'm sure the TBI is doing their job, but sometimes things don't get as much attention when there's drugs involved, etc. But I don't know. You want me to continue following this case? Leave me a comment below. I know it's super confusing. I'm trying to catch up too. It's so weird though, because everything's all over the map and the stories have changed. But let me know what you think. Please subscribe if you're new here. I am Catherine and I follow all things true crime. Please hit the like button on your way out. Thank you for watching Left Undone, Incomplete Investigations. Stay safe, stay well. Bye-bye.